Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, welcome everyone again. <clears throat> so so this afternoon we'll we'll we will start by by running some some examples and going a little bit through the the C2 pack Python package, which is as as Maya already introduced, is so it's it's um, Python package to compute uh, topological invariance. So when it has some interfaces to other uh, tightening codes, like for example from Banyard 90, the the main advantage of this code is that it can run um, you know, topological invariant calculations directly from from initial simulations. So uh, we will go on um, you know about this a little bit later on, but let me remark that uh, uh, this call this uh, only interface uh, totally with uh, quantum espresso and actually the, the example we will run it only runs with an old version of of of, of quantum espresso so it's not been super maintained nowadays but um, we'll probably work on 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 keeping it updated in the um, in the future so let, let's just start with uh, a little bit of, of an overview of, of how this this code works so basically, it computes topological invariance through through Wilson. Uh, yeah, sorry, maybe I, I can I can start by telling you where to look for the for the material. So we you just have to go to the GitHub page of the Banyard School. So GitHub, you can just search for GitHub Banyard tutorials on on Google. Yeah, then you can just enter in the first result. <clears throat> then you go to you know Banyard 2022 summer school. Yeah, so yeah. You have to click here on 2022 May Trieste, and then you can see here all the all the folders for all the, the other. You know, tutorial. So let's go to ours, which is day for AM two C two pack. And here you have the um, the tutorial material. So okay, have you all been able to to get to this page, more or less? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So let's start just with a bit overview of of how this works. So basically, this this code can be topological invariant through through Wilson loops as Already, Professor Vanderbilt explained, and, and also Maya pointed out. Uh, the The main idea is that um, we we compute the um, <coughs> the, the um, you know the, the 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 very face on on a, on a path in, in momentum space, and then we keep track of the of the path that this this very face tracks along along momentum space. So, as as uh, Professor Vanderbilt already explained. This can also be done. Um, so this can also be understood in terms of of the, the um, hybrid Banyard charge centers. So this is all just just equivalent. So basically, we need a code that actually computes all all these points, so that for it, let's say, we can define as if you have a, a surface in in momentum space that's parameterized by two momenta. Let's say that these momenta are kx and, and ky. Then we can compute the hybrid Banyard charge centers on one of the directions. So let's say we compute the very phase integrated on KY, while we plot, let's say, the, the dependence of this, this uh, very phase or this Banyard charge center in the other moment, right? So then by keeping track of the path that this, this uh, loop follows, which is, again, that's why the, the name of, of of Wilson loop, then we can we can compute the, the topological invariance. So the the easiest one you can see here in, in this example. So this this um, this very phase it winds one when it crosses the uh, whole Brillouin zone, and so this means that the turn number that this this Wilson loop is describing is equal to one. There's maybe a more <coughs> pictorial representation of what we are doing here because in this plot the two directions are periodic, so we know that the very phase is has a period of two pi. That momentum also has a, a, a period. Then basically this, this calculation is done on a, on a two torus. And then you can see that the winding, it actually represents an actual winding of this, 
of, of, this, of this path. So since these ones one around this direction while going on a loop, then we can say that we have a, a char number of one. So let's get a little bit into, into how, how this thing is done because I'm I'm talking about integrating very phase, but we have uh, we will actually not perform any any integral. So it it has been shown also in, in Professor Vanderbilt's talk that the the Wilson the, the Wilson loop, so basically the matrix that tells you at, at each point which are the, the individual very phases, it can be computed as the, the product of a series of, of matrices, right? That that um, that are labeled by, by two momenta. So basically, this is what's called the, the overlap matrices. This is what the banner 90mmn file is, is about. And basically, it just computes the overlaps between neighboring uh, wave functions in, in momentum space. So you take one line in momentum space, let's say this line in here, and then we compute all these matrices on individual points. And then the resulting very phase could be just to multiply all the all the all, all the matrices and just yes, compute the the eigenvalues of of this of this matrix to get the, the individual very phases. And then just as a, as a final note, then even if we have uh, several uh, banner functions or several uh, Wilson loop windings, the relevant winding to take into let's say to to actually compute the culture number would be the trace of this operator. So basically, the sum of all of all the vanier charge centers, which is represented in here. So basically, once we have the, the, the Wilson loop and we have all the eigenvalues and the, the total very phase of, for this, this particular value of momentum it could be just the, the sum or the, the trace. So basically, what, what C2PAC does, or what, uh, what we will see that C2PAC does, is to compute all these matrices uh, uh, using different methods. But the, as I said, the, the most uh, powerful one is that it can compute these matrices directly from ab initio calculations without having to rely on on any on any banalization. So again, we we can skip a, a step that as, as we've seen along this week, it, it can be a little bit uh, tough to to deal with. So let's get into into the code. So the C two pack codes a Python package that can be very easily installed, just like like uh, Michael mentioned that Europe can be. You just have to Python pip install it. And it's super, super, super easy to, to compile. It installs all its dependencies and, and, and everything. So let's just go through the, um, you know, the, the, the map of what, of what the program does. <clears throat> so there are two main, main inputs. So let's say there are two main ingredients to run this program. First of all, we need um, an electronic Hamilton. So basically we, we need a Hamiltonian that defines our, our crystalline system. And this can be done in a, in a variety of ways. So first of all, it can be done by 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 giving it an, an actual explicit Hamiltonian matrix. So let's say that you have a model that depends uh, analytically on momentum, then do, you can just define the, a Python function that takes as input the um, momentum. So let's say a, a, fun, a function that just takes you know three three float numbers as an input and outputs a matrix. So just a Hamiltonian matrix. So this is very useful for models that are already out there, like you know the Halley model, Kainmel model, or all these all these models for which you already have the the analytic matrix. But it's even useful for for these kind of continuum models that, that we that we usually develop for you know like these K.P models for for analyzing higher order crossings or or all these things. So you can actually input the directly the the K dependent Hamiltonian and it it will run all the all the topological invariants. There's also another way of, of defining uh, a model that's through a tight binding model. So in this case, instead of giving the explicit matrix, it relies on the on the package TV models, and it, it basically there you can define a model uh, tight binding model just by giving the on-site energies, the copings, the lattice. So it's also it's also very powerful in, in case you have an, a model that's that's defined this way. Nevertheless, all, all these things can, can also be done with, uh, with different codes. So the, what's really special about this code is that the Wilson loops can, can, be, can be run directly from an ab initio calculation. So as I said, this method reduces to finding these MKK matrices uh, on, on lines in momentum space and then multiplying them and, and, and getting the, the, the eigenvalues out. So basically the, the individual very phases. 
So we can actually uh, compute these these matrices from the ab initial calculations, and this is this is what this this program uh, is basically designed to to do. Okay, so now we have the the system that, that we want to analyze. Now we have to define the surface. So the the term number is is only defined uh, with respect to to a particular surface. So again, there are um, uh, a, Plenty of, of different ways in which to, to define a surface. So we can define a plane in momentum space. We can define a sphere. We can define whatever surface that, that we want. We just have to give um, um, uh, the uh, the surface in such a way that is continuous in, in two directions, right? So we cannot compute the the, the Wilson loop on an on an open surface because it, it it makes no sense. So. Um, we can do this by defining an explicit function, like you say here. So this is just a function of, of two variables, s and t, and then it just needs to return a, a you know a, an array of, of of three numbers. So it doesn't have to be like this. It has it can be any combination of of s and t that, that you imagine. It can be a sphere. It can be whatever you want. And actually, so for practice, the the um, the let's say the function that we're going to use to produce the surfaces would be this one so just with one with one line of code you can define the surface on on which to to compute the the wilson loop so um so we we wrote here some some flags that uh, are going to to take uh, care of uh, convergence of the wilson loop but but let's let's skip this because it, it might be a little bit Time consuming to go through all the flags without actually having run any any calculation. So let's go ahead and let's go to run the the, the first example, <clears throat> and then we, we can go back and ask questions about how how it uh, reaches convergence. So we're going to analyze Tintel, right? Which is the same example as as Mikkel did in in his in his talk. And as we know by the you know by the symmetry indicators, this system is predicted to be a mirror turn insulator. However, as 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 Mikkel said, this mirror turn so let's say there are two topological distinct phases that are characterized by the same symmetry indicators. So even though you know the symmetry indicators take us very far into into defining in which topological state our material is, it might not be enough to uniquely define it, but there's no problem. We can run the the Wilson loops on on the, the um, on these two two different planes and and actually find out in which state we are. So, okay. So let let's move into the 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 hands-on part of the of the session. Okay. So just uh, just as before, maybe for for the people who who weren't there, uh, let's copy the the directory of of the C two pack tutorial. Okay. So. Uh, don't uh, git pull it, okay? Because the, the, we have some extra files that that we need to use uh, to to you know to, to make the calculations faster. So let's all please copy this path, okay? So you have to go to media, ICTP user, Aida Vanier tutorials. Yeah. So what's on my on screen? Okay, so we copy it here. Does anyone have any trouble copying the, the directory? Okay. Okay, so let's go inside. Let's go to C2 pack. Okay. And now let's move to mirror Tintel, right? Okay. okay so just while, while everybody gets there, so just a little bit of, of an overview, because uh, some of you might, might not be familiar with what a, a mirror turn number is. So the idea is that in you know in, in time reversal symmetry preserving materials, the, the term the total term number has has to be zero because of, of time reversal symmetry. However, it might happen that some crystalline symmetry is protecting another kind of, of topology that, that is not directly you know a non-zero term number. 
So what happens with mirror churn insulators is that since the since the Hamiltonian commutes with the mirror uh, of symmetry operation, then it happens that if you were able to split your your Hamiltonian into two different eigen sectors of the mirrors, you know the mirror symmetry has two different eigen values. It can be either plus i or minus i. Then what can happen is that you have uh, a, a churn insulator in each of the the different mirror eigen sectors. Okay, so then in this sense, it would be that the, the mirror symmetry is, is preserving the, um, the topological invariant. So to, to actually compute the turn number for each individual uh, subspace of the, of the Hamiltonian, first we have to specify which is the symmetry that we're going to, to split our Hamiltonian by, right? So this is done by going to input. Now let's open the Tintelluride, TW2C2, the plus i. Okay. So if, if, even if you're not able to 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 open the file uh, yet, the, there's the here uh, a screenshot of the um, of, of the file. So basically, many of you are already probably familiar with uh, with PW2 banner 90 or two to two different codes so basically this this is very similar it just needs some some uh, initial information of the system that you have already done that that, that uh, you have run the ab initial calculation for so the prefix is team telluride then the same name of all the files is you know team telluride and then the the directory in which the self-consistent calculation has been run is is uh, already there and and the path is is already there. We don't have to run the ab initial calculation just as in, in Michael's case, because this otherwise this, this error would be too time demanding. So the three flags that we're going to, to go through now are the relevant ones. So basically, if we want to, to split our Hamiltonian into the different eigenstates, or at the say eigenspaces or eigenvalue uh, subspaces of the of some symmetry operation, then we have to define the symmetry operation. So the way in which this is defined is by just a number, like this is very similar to, to the AREP code. So you just have to give the symmetry number of the symmetry operation as it is outputted directly by, by, by quantum espresso. So for this, we can go to the to where the, um, the self-consistent calculation is run, which is back in the main directory of mirror in Telluride. Then going to self consistent. And now we can just open the output for the self consistent calculation. So basically, after a lot of, uh, you know, like a summary of the inputs and, and stuff that Quantum Espresso gives us, there's the, a list of the, of the symmetry operations. So now we want to check whether this system is in a mirror turn number two topological phase on this mirror or a mirror turn number for topological phase on this mirror. So let's start with this one, and then let's let's go find out which is the, the, the number of this symmetry, okay? So as I said, in the in the output file for the self-consistent calculation, you, you start looking at symmetries. For example, this is a, a 90 degree rotation with Cartesian axis minus one, zero, zero. So this is not the mirror that we're looking for, blah, blah, blah. Then, here, okay, so this is the mirror. So this is a 180 degree rotation times inversion, which is just a weird way of defining the mirror, but I mean, this is an, an actual definition of a mirror. And then the Cartesian axis of the mirror, so basically the mirror is orthogonal to the Cartesian axis, is the one one zero. Okay, so we know that this is the symmetry that, that we have to, to look for. Then, If we go back to the input folder in which we were, and we open again the PW to to C to pack um, the pi w to to C to plus i dot in, then now we understand why the e is equal to to twenty nine. So. Um, even if, like uh, like Michael said, in the AREP code, you don't have to specify 
the actual eigenvalue of the symmetry operation. In in this code, you you need to to do this. So basically, you have to define which is the actual symmetry eigenvalue that the program will have to look at. So basically, this what this program does is go through all the wave functions and then compute which is the actual eigenvalue for, for the symmetry. And then if it is plus i, then it will keep it. And then if it's not plus i, it will just remove it. So that later on when we run the, the Wilson calculation, we only take eigenstates of the Hamiltonian that have actual symmetry eigenvalue plus i. And then just, just, just an, you know, an extra commodity, then we, we can uh, exclude the, the bands that we know that do not contribute to the, to the Wilson. So, in this particular example, I know that there are um, 16, 18 bands until the Fermi level, but here Mikkel provided a calculation for the for the team telluride. So uh, it's it maybe you cannot see it super clearly, but basically there's a huge gap here between this this last band and the next one. So basically we can with the next one we can exclude the first 12 bands of the calculation so that everything will run a lot faster and, and, and smoother. Also, it's a lot easier to keep track of a few uh, binary charge centers than, than keeping track of, of you know, tens and, and tens of them. OK, so, so we have already defined the symmetry that, that we are looking for. Now let's move on to, on to the, the main Python program, right? So let's go to the... Um, to the parent folder of mirror team telluride and let's open the run m1.py so uh, do we have any questions so far for going into the actual calculation are you following okay great okay so so let's let's go through this uh what you will find first are four blocks that are necessary to run the calculation uh, that I'm, I'm going to explain, but but please do not touch them because it, it might break the, the, the calculation and then we will have to, to, to spend a lot of time running stuff that is not really necessary. So first of all, the, the, the first thing is just the, some, some patch stuff. So basically you have to, to tell the program where the your quantum espresso installation is, your executables, also, you know, if you have some kind of parallelization and you know, all, all these things. Then uh, the program itself, if, if it doesn't find a self-consistent calculation, then it will try to, to run it again. Again, and as, as this is this is pretty pretty computationally expensive, we have already run the self-consistent calculation for you and it's, it's already stored and, and, and well, you know, the, the path is, is fine. Then in here is, is where, where we define the, the system. So basically we have to define uh, different systems for different eigenvalues of the Hamilton because we could compute this just for one of the, of the eigenvalues of the, of the mirror operation, but we are going to, to run it for, for both of them to check that the actual total chart number is still equal to zero as time reversal symmetry enforces. So again, you do not have to, to touch this system. And then, uh, so let's say finally, the, the, the last um, block that, that uh, you shouldn't touch for the moment are the defining settings of the Wilson loop calculation. So uh, instead of running a, a blind Wilson loop calculation, this program has a lot of checks to actually make sure that the Wilson, uh, that the Wilson loop calculation is actually converged and that you can keep track of all the, of, of all the, the, the paths that this, this Wilson loop makes. But, so far, these these settings have been chosen so that uh, everything runs smoothly. But maybe later on we can we can um, if, if we have time we, we can try to play and uh, you know going through what all these these convergence parameters mean. Okay, so here are the the, um, the main parts of the program. So as I said, uh, uh, the the situ pack program needs uh, two ingredients. First, uh, the system, the Hamiltonian which we have already given it here. I don't know, it just reads all, all the stuff from the from the initial calculation and then the surface. So as I said, a mirror turn insulator is, 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 uh, is an insulator in which you can split your Hamiltonian into two subspaces and then you have uh, you know, a turn number different from zero in, in each subspace. But then this only works if the Hamiltonian actually commutes with the mirror symmetry. So 
this happens on only on the planes in momentum space that coincide with this mirror, right? So this 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 can only happen in the in the um, in the planes in in the brilliance on that coincide with this mirror. So in surface, we have to give uh, a two D surface that's parameterized by by S and and T parameter. And this surface has to be in, in such a way that all these points, so all the points with the form SS and T, are left invariant by this by this mirror symmetry. So you can trust this. Because, I mean, we, we can we can go through how to to construct these these surfaces, which uh, is not a trivial thing when when going to the to the next example. But uh, for for the time being, we can just uh, we can just leave it here. Then before actually running the calculation. We tell you about um, other other um, uh, functionality that that CTPAC has. That is that uh, you can save Wilson calculation results. So you can save the results um, uh, on, on in a very easy way, and actually you don't have to 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 rerun these points again. So as I said, we will compute the Wilson loop on you know a discretized set of momenta by integrating on the other direction. So by saving the results the points in which we have already computed the, the, the very phase are going to be stored. And then if I want to rerun this calculation with a few more points, it won't have to run all these points again. It will just load the results and plot on the, on, on, on the, you know, the, the, the plot that, that, that you end with. And yeah, basically this, the, the last thing are just few lines to, to compute the, the, the the turn numbers of the of the calculations and, and plot in the um, the Wilson loop. So it's another very fine um, uh, let's say capability of this program that you don't have to you know manually keep track of the Wilson loop. It actually outputs on a, a number for the for the um, term number or the C2 index, for example. So let's go ahead and and try to run this. First of all, remember that we have to to activate the um, the, the Python environment for, for this tutorial. So this can be done by writing in the um, in the in the terminal work on C two pack. Yes, the, the same as as we did for it. Okay, so now uh, convince yourselves that you are on the on the correct directory, and then if if you are, we can just Python run the the program. Yes. Press enter. Okay, you've been able to to run the program. You have it. Um, if you can. It. Ah, okay, okay. It it it, it ran. Okay, perfect. Huh. Oh, no. Okay, so if everybody has run the calculation, let's go over the, the, the final report. Okay, so first it outputs, which are the, the parameters of this, of this calculation. So as I said, these uh, first parameters we can go through. We can go through them uh, later on once we have, you know, uh, run a few more examples. But basically, they ensure that the Wilson loop calculation is is well converged. Then, uh, uh, if you see, uh, it's rerunning everything because it's loading the results for from this this file that I that I already. Uh, set up there because again these calculations can take up some time and we just wanted to to give an, an intuition of, of how the the program works. But actually, you can if you want, you can now go on and try to change the the settings in the in the parameter section to to see how how it, it runs again and and you can add more points on and, and whatever. So basically, what, what it does is uh, to go first through the through the lines that you have specified. And then it adds more lines. So let's say uh, a line is is a, is a value in momentum space in which it computes yet another uh, Banyard charge center, just you know to to be able to to actually keep track of the of the Wilson loop. So basically, this program keeps adding and adding lines until until convergence is is reached. 
And then finally, it gives you a, a, a convergence report. So, I mean, this is a, a flawless run. It passed all the line convergence tests, all the surface convergence tests, and everything worked perfect. Then this is the run for the for the other eigenvalue for the minus i eigenvalue of the mirror, and then this also ran flawlessly. And as you can see, the resulting chern number is that for plus i eigenstates is equal to two, and for minus i eigenstates is equal to minus two. So one nice thing about the polygon insulators is that we know that they have to be integer. So you know, if the numeric calculation is close enough to an integer, then it's an integer. Okay. So, um, do you have any questions, comments, doubts so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. If if we go to the to the input to the to the Python file, right? This is where we define the surface. So basically, to run a Wilson loop. We need um, a two-dimensional surface that's periodic on, on the two directions. So basically, this is defined by two directions that are parameterized by a, by a parameter, right? So basically, uh, what this does is for each value of t, right? So let, let's let, let's copy this here to, to compare to to the nodes. So. So we have defined our surface like this, like st is uh, sst. So if we go to this plot, basically t are the momenta in one of the directions by which the, the Wilson loops are labeled. So in this plot, it would be kx. And then in the ss0 direction, it would compute the very phases, right? So basically it integrates along s and it plots along t. Welcome. Okay, so so now that that we've run this, we have checked that you know Tintelura is actually a mirror turn insulator with turn number two on 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 this mirror. But then what about the other? So how can we make sure that that it's this one and, and not the other, or you know any weird combination of the of the two? Well, then now we are going to run the calculation for this other for this other mirror. So. Uh, Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I completely forgot about this. So basically, uh, the the calculation told us explicitly which are the term numbers of the of the calculation, but we don't have to. I mean, we of course trust the calculation, but it also outputs, which is the the actual plot for the um, uh, of of the Wilson loops, and and they look like this. So as I said, there are three bands that uh, we are taking into account in this calculation. That are the last three bands of the of of tin telluride. And then these bands are split by eigenvalue. So we would have three bands with plus i eigenvalue and three other bands with minus i eigenvalue. So when we run the Wilson loops for these bands, you can see here in black are plotted the, the, um, the actual eigenvalues of the Wilson loop operator. So basically, if we were able to distinguish the three bands, this would be like um, uh, how each of the individual three bands winds up. You know. Physically, the, the only thing that, that matters in, in, this, in this moment is how the three of them wind at the same time. And so the total winding, as you can see here, is equal to two for the plus i eigenvalue. And then for the minus i eigenvalue, this is, again, equal to, to minus two. So this is like an extra check of actually looking at the, at the Wilson loop to see how the, how the calculation has, has run. OK. So I think that so far we have already convinced ourselves that uh, that Tinteluride is a mirror chern insulator with chern number two. Now let's go ahead and try to to um, uh, to check the, the Wilson loops for the other mirror to check that they are they are actually zero. So we are going to open the uh, this file and we are going to to edit it. Right? Let's go ahead. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. So the way in which we started before was opening the in the um, input folder. We opened the pw 2 c 2 plus i um, file, and in this way we define 
the symmetry operation and the symmetry eigenvalue. So then we have to go back to the self-consistent calculation folder and check which is the symmetry for the mirror in the 0, 0, 1 direction. Let's do this. So we go ahead, we search for, for the symmetry operations, and we find that this operation here is inversion plus 180 degree rotation along the Cartesian axis 0, 0, 1. So then this is the mirror that we, we that we want to look for. Okay. This mirror has E sim equal to 26. So we have to modify this file. Please modify it with me. So that now it reads 26. Okay, we save this file. Then the symmetry eigenvalue we don't have to change because we know that all mirrors have the same uh, symmetry eigenvalue. So we can still uh, leave it like this. Okay. So we change the symmetry operation for the plus i file. Then let's change it for the minus i file, which is the one that will keep care, will take care of the. Um, of the minus i eigenvalues. And again, we have to change the symmetry to 26. Okay. So now we have to modify the, um, the, the Python script. Okay, we will leave this like this. The settings also, please uh, leave it like this. And now we have to define the surface. Okay, so this is uh, maybe the part that's a little bit non-trivial. So as I said, uh, we need to define the surface by two directions that are in plane. The thing about this system is that this, uh, it's a um, face center, I think, or uh, no, it, it's, uh, it's a body center. So it's a rock star structure. So the brilliant zone does not look uh, like a cube. It looks like, you know, this kind of, of uh, with orientation of the of the reciprocal lattice vectors and this program works not on cartesian coordinates but on reciprocal coordinates so now we need to find which two vectors are inside the plane in reciprocal coordinates so I mean, there are many things to to do this so one would be to you know stare at, at the at the brilliant zone and convince yourself and try to find some the, the components of, of this mirror, which is the, the KC equal, equal zero plane. Uh, but but this, this can be a, a little bit tricky. So um, a more or less a straightforward way to do this is to go again to the, um, to the self-consistent output file, because in here you have the matrix representation of this, of this symmetry. So then we just have to find two directions that are you know, not proportional one to, to the other that satisfy that they are left invariant by the symmetry. Okay, so you can you can try to, to find this by, by yourselves, or you can go to to the um, to the main folder of mirror in telluride, go into the help folder, and then look at, at how how we already defined the, the surface. So basically, you can convince yourselves that the, the two such vectors that are uh, left invariant by this symmetry are the one minus one zero. You know, if you plug here one minus one zero, and then let, let me try to to annotate on this. I can take wrong. I'm sorry, Kai, uh, uh, do you know how to draw like uh, this annotate thing from Zoom?
Uh, okay, like sir again. Yeah, and then one. Ah, Thanks. great, thank you. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so as I said, we, we have to convince ourselves that these two directions are uh, actually left invariant by this by this mirror. So the two directions are the one minus one zero, right? This is defined by S minus ST. And the other one would be one, zero, one. So, you know, you can just plug it in, in here and then, you know, you just do matrix multiplication. So zero minus one, one times this is equal to, you know, exactly the same thing. So minus one, minus one, this is plus one. Then minus one, zero, this is minus one. And then zero zero one times this. This is this one. Okay, perfect. So we found one of one such directions that, that are left uh, invariant. And then the other one, it works just uh, the same way. So if you multiply it, so let's say, let's erase this. And then you know, maybe we can not so easy. Then draw not eraser. No. Okay. So then we, we multiply like this again. So zero minus one, one times this one, this is one. Then minus one, minus one plus one is equal to zero. And then zero, zero, one, this is equal to one. Great, we have the, the two directions. So in, in practice, this actually works like this. So basically you have the representation and then you, you try some some directions until you find the, the two that are that are in plane. There's probably an algorithmic procedure that's uh, probably too long to, to actually care about on 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 a daily basis. So oh, yeah, okay, okay. So now this is the this is the the surface that defines the the k c equals zero plane, which is the same plane that is left invariant by the by the mirror symmetry, right? It's this this plane in here. So now, instead of going ahead and, and, and running the, the, the calculation by, by ourselves, what we're going to do is to load the results that you already have for, for this calculation. And then, then we will have some time to, to play with the parameters. But otherwise, this, this, this takes a, a, a little bit too long. So basically, something we can do is just to copy these blocks, you know, the plot and print, the run calculation, and then defining surface. We can copy them and then paste them on run M1. So basically we just have to, to replace these results. So replace them. Okay, save. And I will go again into the terminal and run the calculation again. So we do Python running one dot Python. Okay, so um, then maybe I, I went a little fast with uh, with this. So, have you been able to to run the this new calculation copying the blocks? No. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe you can state your problems, or maybe Michael can go. Yeah. Okay, so you will be copying the, yeah. from the help folder. No. Okay, yeah. So we help you get help and see. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm your I'm the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Yes, so you're probably basically there's a direct one inside the main area. Right? Okay, yeah. Okay. 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 So basically, uh, the, uh, yeah, so from the surface, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. so to leave everything and I just leave all the Yeah, so you, you have to do um, there's a two step uh, get the calculation. So first of all, you run the surface the calculation and you store that, and then you store and that takes um, uh, the step. Uh, so you pick one momentum and then we run and do the two step calculation on several points in this line and compute the reference like this. So this is what this part of the program takes care of. So basically, the end of the computer pressure, so I mean, you have to get like, like the, the minimal input, but then it automatically gets the cable, point, runs the calculation, runs the interface to one year compute CMM, and one of the very best. Okay, we have a question from Zoom. Schema based on those invariant vectors. Yeah, okay, perfect. Great question. So uh, let me try to do this whiteboard thing again. Where I... Okay, let's clear this. Okay, so basically we know that uh, this vector one was one of the invariant vectors, right? So you can say, okay, but then then this vector is also an, an invariant vector, right? So uh, why, why cannot I, I write it like uh, S halves minus S halves and then zero? So the surface that you have to give the program has to be a surface that's periodic with period one in, in, in reduced coordinates. So then you have to give to the, to the program something that's proportional to this direction. And then when it goes, let's say from zero to one, it's periodic on the on the on the Brillouin zone. So this is why this is the one of the, the directions that's that's periodic. Then the other direction is just the, the same way. If you have one zero one, then the other direction would be just you know a vector times this. I guess you, you need to you need to have um, entire reciprocal lattice vectors to, for for the system to be to be periodic. It has to be some kind of combination of uh, you know ones and zeros. I don't know if uh, the answer was satisfactory.
So oh, for, for, for those of you who have uh, already run successfully the, the M, so let's say the, the, um, the mirror turn number on the, on the C direction, then what you should have found is that, let me run this again. So, sorry, come on. Basically, in this case, we see that the turn number is basically zero in, in both in both science sectors. So this means that, you know, as we expected, the turn number is, is actually zero. You can actually check this in the plots by seeing that this, this, uh, these binary charge centers, they didn't wind up. They basically just move a little bit from the origin, but then they, they come back without, without winding, which is, you know, the meaning of, of having a turn number zero. So as, as an extra exercise for, for those of you who, who want to, you know, mess a little bit with, with all these things, the, the prediction of the mirror turn insulator in, in Tintelluride is not only for this mirror, the 110, but for the 1 minus 102. So there's, again, if, if you don't want to, to, to work a lot, there, there's in, in the helps folder, there's another blocks that run this calculation for this other mirror, but I mean, I encourage you to, to try and, and, and modify the, the, the files for yourselves. And of course, finding the surface, which is invariant by the M11 bar zero mirror. So if you want to try it and, and then we will be, you know, going around and, and seeing if, if, if you have any doubts. So just as a final side, if, if you found uh, this, uh, um, all this symmetry talk and group theory talk interesting, there are actually very nice lectures, uh, actually the, the, the ones that I, I learned from uh, in, in, in YouTube posted by, by uh, Professor Juan Luis Mañez, which it goes from the very, very basics of, of, of you know, almost anything to to having a great understanding of, of the basics of, of group theory. So I will I can probably share this um, this link with you somehow, but for the moment, uh, so probably for the people on Zoom, I can add this to the chat. Uh, okay. Let's open. Ah, okay, yeah, perfect, because I'm copying in the virtual machine. You know, so for, for, for some people neither. But then again, I'll, I'll, I will add this, this, uh, this link to, to the tutorial materials. Uh, but if, uh, if you want to find it, you just have to look on, on YouTube for group theory by uh, Professor Juan Luis Mañez. Mm, I think we're already... Yeah. Okay. We, yeah, we need to move to the next okay. session. But please, let's thank our, our speaker. Thank um, yeah. Okay.